the first reported death from the highly addictive so-called zombie drug has been confirmed in Europe as it continues to spread in American cities. Now opioids mixed with a growing threat that is turning people into what some are calling living zombies. Street drug component is officially called xylazine, nicknamed Trank, as in tranquilizer. Xylazine. 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 I thought fentanyl was the worst thing I've ever seen in my career, but now they've added Trank to fentanyl. Death as a product of opioid consumption is increasing exponentially. 20 years ago, less than 20,000 people died via overdose in the United States. Yet in 2021, this number increased over 80,000 and reached over 100,000 last year alone. These classes of drugs can involve your standard painkillers such as codeine, but now we've got new ones, even stronger. For these new drugs are not just used for the helping of pain, but the pleasure they invoke in your brain is what makes them addictive. Now, the most common culprit is unarguably fentanyl, which too has seen a drastic increase in both its consumption and its overdose statistics, with it found in many toxicology reports of dead addicts. However, it seems as though we found something that can enhance fentanyl, effectively forming a brand new super drug, and it's now plaguing cities. It's now found alongside fentanyl and is making overdose even more likely. Plus, it's incredibly cheap to manufacture, and upon taking it, there's almost nothing doctors can do to save you. Especially when it starts turning the user into a literal zombie. This is Trank, and it's straight out of a horror film. This is Trank, or Trank Dope, or Zombie Drug. It was originally synthesized to be used as a tranquilizer for cattle and horses, hence the name, Trank. However, just like with most things, human tried it too. It became used recreationally in around 2000, beginning in Puerto Rico. Yet, the drug actually has a longer lineage than this. The prime component of Trank, Xylazine, was first synthesized in 1962 in West Germany. Fab and Fabric and Bayer, the company at the time, now just called Bayer, derived it for its use in hypertension or high blood pressure. All the initial testing found that xylazine, though, was way too strong in humans. Clinical trials found that it was actually extremely dangerous, with what were healthy volunteers becoming severely bradycardic, and their blood pressure dropping significantly. Because of this, it was not approved by the FDA. These trials also notably caused depressant effects in the central nervous system. Participants were practically sedated and their muscles completely relaxed. Eventually, xylazine found itself only approved for use in animals as a tranquilizer by the FDA, for they can handle much more than we can. With this in mind, researchers did not expect humans to be taking it. They only expected animals to be having it. So now we know almost nothing of the continued effects on humans. Some papers have reported consumption of as little as 40 milligrams as fatal, whilst other papers have reported it to be 2,400 milligrams, very different. Whilst the blood concentration in autopsies can range from trace amounts, practically nothing, to 16 milligrams per litre. Even Wikipedia reports that there is no defined safe or fatal concentration of xylazine because of the significant overlap between the non-fatal and post-mortem blood concentrations of xylazine. It begs the question, why are people taking it in the first place? Well, as mentioned, the drug was approved for use in the United States, but only for the use on animals. It's therefore very easy to acquire, it's not controlled or regulated at all. Pharmaceutical companies do sell it to veterinary practices, but you can actually legally go and buy it online yourself, without working for a vet, or even having the correct credentials. This, alongside the fact that you can buy a kilogram for the same price as a Big Mac, is making it a popular choice for addicts. So we have these people taking it, but what is it actually doing to their bodies? Now, Trank itself isn't just xylazine. Oftentimes it's a mixture of both xylazine and opioids, including heroin, fentanyl, or even the newer nitazines. Xylazine itself isn't an opioid, but does in some ways work like them. Xylazine is an adrenergic agonist, meaning it decreases the release of norepinephrine and dopamine in the central nervous system. But the actual compound has a specific property, making it even more lethal. The molecule is highly lipophilic, 
Unlike other drugs, there's no polar OH group on the compound, so xylazine can travel across tissue and the blood-brain barrier quicker than almost all other drugs. It will directly stimulate receptors in the brain, telling it to slow your breathing, your heart rate, and basically sedate you within seconds of taking it. In the US, because it's so cheap, xylazine is now often found bulking up fentanyl or heroin supplies to make trank. Most people taking it don't even know they are. In turn though, this makes the drug so much stronger in an interacting process. Both the drugs toy with each other until their potency is sky high. The opioids in the mixture, heroin or fentanyl, cause the release of dopamine in the brain's ventral tegmental area, the pleasure center. This is rewarding and makes people want to do it again. On its own, the xylazine part of the mixture isn't as rewarding, but once taken with fentanyl, a powerful classical conditioning process occurs. And perhaps after the first usage, the consumer is already addicted. A combination of both of these opioids produces significantly more tissue damage than what is seen standalone. With fentanyl and heroin, necrotic tissue is regarded as a somewhat rare byproduct. With Trank, it's practically expected. Black scabs, eshkars, and thick heaps of dead necrotic tissue will soon form all over the body, from the inside to the out. And this not only spreads, but is highly prone to infection. It will lead to open holes in appendages, and without some sort of treatment, amputation will be the only resort to save the consumer. Walking around in the high state, with mounds of necrosis spread across the body, is what gives the appearance of a zombie. As of now, it's unclear how xylazine causes the necrosis compared to other drugs, but some people believe that it slows the heart so much, vasoconstriction, the thinning and narrowing of the blood vessels occurs, making it impossible for the body to supply all of itself with oxygen, so the tissue just dies. In a study from Spadaro, he asked people to self-report their experiences with Trank, and this is what users had to say. One user commented that bilateral prevalent skin ulcers in extremities, skin infections and tissue death while another user commented that the wounds last months, my primary has had me on three rounds of antibiotics with no luck. But even so, this isn't stopping people from taking it. The effects of heroin and fentanyl will often be felt within seconds, and the climatic high comes after around half an hour. Most of the time this will last for around two hours and then start to wear off, but with xylazine added and becoming trank, this lasts much longer. Some addicts have reported it can last anywhere up to 72 hours a constant high for three entire days. The cheap price combined with the everlasting high is why consumption is skyrocketing, despite the horrific effects. So we've seen what xylazine in Trank can do to the body, but is there any treatment or is it instant death and zombification? The common form of treatment when someone overdoses on standard opioids is naloxone. An injection is administered to the addict, which binds to the receptors in the brain, which in turn stops the opioids from binding instead, so you can't get high. With Trank, as xylazine isn't an opioid, this doesn't work. Now, as said, doctors are really struggling in detecting xylazine in the body. Tests don't pick it up, so as a safety measure, naloxone is given anyway but as it's not as effective, the patients can still simply die. Some research has been undertaken in the hope of finding something that can bring someone back from an overdose. Two antagonists named Antipamazole and Yahimbine have been seen reversing the effects in animals, but there's no official status of it working on humans. So we currently remain without an option. It's come to the point where doctors believe hemodialysis, the process of cleaning out someone's entire blood system is becoming the likely option. But even with this, xylazine's volume of distribution is so large that even this seems impossible. This leaves conquering the addiction in the hands of the addict. Users of opioids describe heroin withdrawal as only a fraction of the difficulty and pain of trank detox. So with little help from professionals and one of the hardest withdrawal symptoms known to man, why wouldn't someone choose the pleasurable option, killing their suffering for only the price of a Big Mac? Other participants in Spadaro's study commented on withdrawal from Trank and all noted how much worse it is. Suboxone and Methadone don't help if there's Trank in your dope. Several participants commented on autonomic effects that weren't asked about in the survey such as lay by blood pressure. One user commented, very high blood pressure, can feel your heart beat in your face, it's so bad. Chest pains, stretching feeling. Another commented, coming off Trank makes your blood pressure spike with dizziness and lips go numb. This comment on YouTube from AZ Dude revealed his experiences with Trank, revealing it overtook him harder than heroin alone ever did, 
and it even exceeded his tolerance already built from using opiates regularly. All of this is why Trank is on the rise. Left alone to suffer, with the drug so easy to acquire and so easy to take the pain away, forever to turn the addict into a zombie in desperate need of help. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. It's free and it really helps me out. See you next time.